Good morning and welcome to what I call the digital church. Um, for the past few weeks, we've been in a sermon series talking about discipleship. But I thought it would be a prudent thing to do to talk about how the people of God, the children of God, respond during a time of crisis or a time of famine. Uh, the word famine means extreme scarcity of food, uh, a lack of or deficiency of product. In the past few weeks, we have seen examples of people who've had the perception that we're about to enter into a time of famine. And there have been big explosions all over the country of people rushing to grocery stores and box stores for products that they believe would not be available in the near future. And you've seen on the news, we've seen people fighting over things such as toilet tissue and acting just out of character because of this time of famine and they respond negatively to that time. I I want to share with you today a few stories from the Bible about individuals and how they responded during the time of famine. Uh, the first one's in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, and you can read it. It starts at verse 24 through 30, and it's two moms, and each mom has a son. And because times are so tough, they decide they're going to eat their children so they could survive. And so mom number one, she kills her son. That's right, she kills her son, boils him, and both moms eat him. Uh, the next day, it's supposed to be mom number two's turn, but she decides she doesn't want to do that. And you have to think in your mind, what in the world would make you want to kill your own son and eat them? But people respond negatively in a time of famine. The enemy always tempts us to do something we would normally not do when we're desperate. And we do take desperate measures to meet our needs. The negative way to respond to a famine is to always put yourself first. So if you find yourself putting yourself first during this time of famine, you know you're acting in a negative way. The negative way to respond to a famine is to focus on the right now. No matter what your future may be, all you can see is right now. And you totally disregard your future. Another way to respond negatively to a famine is to totally disregard the promises of God. Now, King David said this in Psalms 37, verse 25. He said, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg bread. You see, we forget about God's promises when we respond negatively to a time of famine. When I respond in a negative way, I also forget about my position as a son or a daughter, and I lose sight of the responsibility God has towards his children. It reminds me of a story, uh, me and my wife and my kids, uh, my son was about in late teens, and he, st he started going to work with me in the construction field. And so he was living at home, and every morning Ola would get up, and then she would fix him uh, a sandwich to go to work. But she would not fix one for me. So after a few days, I decided to ask her, sweetheart, why are you fixing Stacy uh, lunch and not me? And she said something like this, well, I want to encourage him. You know, I want to encourage him to get him go to work. And I said to her, and we, we had four kids at this time, and, and they, they, they were young kids. And she said to me, she said, go look in those bedrooms and see those kids in there. That's your encouragement to go to work. I said, oh, OK, I understood. I'm a good father. I'm going to take care of my kids. And so when we when we act in a negative way, we forget that we actually have a good, good father. There's this Christian a singer named Chris Tomlin, and he sings this song entitled Good, Good Father. And let me read a few of the lyrics. It says, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. So you see, when I respond negatively, I focus on myself. I focus on the right now. I disregard the promises of God and I forget about my position as a son and as a daughter, and I begin to act like I'm an orphan and I don't have any father. Now, I want to look at the other side as well, when you act positively during the time of famine. And I'm going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 26. And we're going to look at verse, verse 1 and then look at verse 12. Genesis 26 um, and verse 1. Let me read it here. And it says... There was a famine in the land, 
besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerah. So there was a famine in the land. Get that in your mind. There was a famine in the land. And then verse 12 says this. Then Isaac sowed in that land where there was a famine at and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. It reminds me of what pastor that said, if what you have in your hand is not your harvest, it must be your seed. And so Isaac decided, I'm not going to hoard during this time of famine. I'm actually going to sow in this time of famine. And the Bible says God blessed him a hundredfold because he decided to sow. He decided to give, to be generous in the time of famine. Now, the next story, the next story is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Um, verses 8 through 15. And I'll, I'll read a little bit for you. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. Uh, start at verse 8. And it says here, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise. This is God speaking to the prophet Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Now, they're in a time of famine. And God is saying to him, listen, the resource I used to bless you, I'm not going to use that resource anymore. It was by a brook and he had ravens bring him bread. And God is saying, I'm not going to use that resource anymore. I need you to move on to a different location. So he tells him to move and says, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. Now listen to this, she was the widow, she had no husband. She was not just a widow, with no husband, but she had a son. So she's a widow with a son in the time of famine, and God says, I'm going to use her to bless you. And so she was there, and then the prophet Elijah said this. He said, please bring me a little cup of water that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her. So she's walking away, and he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now, don't forget, she's a widow. She has a son. It's in the time of famine. And he asked her to bring him a piece of bread. So she said, I can imagine her just turning around and looking at him and giving him one of those crazy looks. And she says this, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. I do not have it. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. She had made up her mind. Listen, I don't have bread. I've got a little bit of flour and some oil. I'm going to make a cake. Me and my son, we're going to eat it and we're going to die. And Elijah said to her, he said this, do not fear. And that's one thing we need to hear today during this time of a famine and, and shut down. Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour should not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. He had a decision to make. She's a widow with a son in the time of famine. And this man of God says, before you feed yourself, give me some first. Now, that's a big ask. I don't think I got the courage to even ask anyone to do that. But he did because he was trying to bless her. And so verse 15 says, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her son ate for many days. She had to make a decision. Am I going to sow into this man's life? in the time of famine, or I'm going to hoard it, eat what I have, and die. Now listen, this is not about giving money to the man of God, not about giving an offering to the church. It's about actually being generous and sowing in the time of famine. I, I, I don't know if I've got the type of faith to sow in the type of time of famine, but she did. And because of her obedience to the word of God, she reaped in a harvest. So what are you talking about, Pastor? How, how do I sow? How do I be generous? 
during this time of famine? Well, I've got one way I want to share with you. And, and I think it's, it's something you can actually start doing this coming week. Because beauticians are shut down, uh, nail shops are, are shut down, uh, barber shops are shut down. Uh, so they're not making any, bringing any money. So how about this? What if the people of God who normally go to those businesses were to go to them anyway and say, I know you can't do my nails. Uh, I know you can't do my hair. Uh, I know you can't be a, give me a trim, but I'm going to pay you like you did. What would happen? What type of response would it be if we were to do like that? Well, number one, here's what's going to happen. You would align yourself up with Proverbs 19.17. That's number one. Proverbs 19.17 says this. Whoever is generous to the poor. Whoever is generous to the poor, it says this, lends to the Lord. Now, here's a promise after this. I, I love this promise. It says here, and he, God, will repay him for his deed. So when we give to the poor, when we're generous to small businesses during this time of hardship, we actually lend to the Lord. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to pay you back. Don't you worry. You just be generous. You just sow into their life. Uh, number two, you set up a situation for a conversation with them about Jesus. Because they're going to wonder, why in the world do it all this craziness that you're going through right now, why would you pay me for a, for a task, for a service I can't even do for you? They're going to ask you why. And at that moment in time, you can have a conversation with them about Jesus. And you're not doing it to get any glory, to get any point. You're doing it because you love Jesus and you'll be a blessing to others. Now, now, Brother John Cable shared a message last week about impossible faith. And when I think about impossible faith, I think about this. I'm going to have the faith to sow into your life, even though, even though I didn't get the service, even though times are hard myself, even though I'm last to, down to my last cup of water and flour and oil, I'm going to sow into your life first, and I'm going to trust God as my heavenly father to provide for me. That's impossible faith. And, and the last one I want to share with you is when I, when I act like this, when I act positively in time of famine, it begins to shape my heart into a God type of heart. You see, God had many options when man first sinned. He could have wiped Adam and Eve off the planet and started over again. But according to John, John chapter 3, verse 16, he decided to give. The Bible says this, for God so loved the world that he gave. And so when we have that God type of heart, we'll give. I don't wait for someone to give back to me. I don't hoard me and me and myself. And I know I begin to give because of that God type of heart. There's something supernatural about giving. Uh, Paul quotes these words of Jesus in the book of Acts. He says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There's something about giving that changes the focus off of yourself and onto others. And it changes, it just changes you. It does something for you. It's supernatural. And so when I begin to sow in the time of famine, I begin to act like God acts. I begin to look more and more like him. And again, people that see me will see the light and see the salt of the earth because I'm acting like God acts. So because God gave, we are called to demonstrate that same type of attitude, even in a time of famine. I'll tell you what, guys, I've got to go now. I hope this message blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. I want you to go find someone this week that you can be a blessing to. And remember, when you are generous to the poor, you actually lend to the Lord. God bless you and thank you.